So today we have Carly. Hey, Carly, how are you? Hi. Yeah, good. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Um, tell us a little. So today is what is it? It's like five o'clock on a Monday. It's, it's Anzac Day tomorrow. Yes, yes, it is. I'm working you, tomorrow, but yeah, okay. you're working I'm tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I don't miss working public holidays. Or um, I know the money used to be good, but yeah. Well, it was always usually quiet too, right? It uh well it depends. I mean I'm I'm a midwife, so yeah. it's we don't really oh, well, get <laughs> weekends or, or quiet time or um and I think now that I now that I travel midwife, so I only work seven to eight months of the year, so I kind of don't really mind yeah, working public holidays, weekends and all that, because I know I have a pretty good break each year. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um oh, that that's leading into the first question I have so yeah give us yeah. A, a little bit of a background of who you are what you're doing what you've been up to and what got us here today yeah so I'm a midwife um a nurse as well so I think anyone that works in healthcare has probably at some point experienced burnout because just you know the understaffed and I think I remember reading someone posted an article on a Facebook group that was from 20 years ago and it was basically saying how healthcare is understaffed and they need more staff and and I just thought this is literally this could have been written today and I was like how are they having these same issues over 20 years and still nothing still nothing's been like fixed so yeah (laughs) so I think anyone that works in healthcare will understand so I was um I was working in Melbourne at quite a busy hospital and just from the moment I started my grad year which for anyone that doesn't work in healthcare it's sort of you after you finish your university you do a grad year and you just just the expectation to work overtime and double shifts and extra hours it even though you know you don't have to there was always this expectation Mm. that you should or you felt bad if you didn't and I remember I got to the end of that year and technically my contract was 0.8 which means you're working sort of four days a week eight days a fortnight but I just remember each week I would be working so many hours and when I got to the end of that year I was like this is this is crazy like I can't yeah. keep this up and even like the pay when you start off as a graduate midwife I think my pay I started a Oh gosh, I can't. it was about seven years ago. So it was roughly maybe about $30 or it might've been less like $28 an hour, something like that. And so, you know, you're working all these hours, you're not making much money. You've got this massive, like 40 grand hex there. Yeah. Um, and it was just crazy. And they have this saying, nurses eat their young, which is an awful saying. And it's so true though, isn't it? But, but it is, it's so true in this profession where you think everyone should be lovely and nice. And I think for the majority of time, I have met some beautiful people, made some lovely yeah. friends, but I also met some awful, like awful, awful people that literally made me go, I cannot work here any longer because this person is so awful. They literally make me cry every time I see them. Yep. You know, they've been reported to management for bullying and they still have a job. Actually, they yep. even got a promotion. So yeah. it's, it's <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, yeah, it's crazy. So I, I stuck it out in Melbourne and kept yeah. yeah. And so, just kept working and working and I, I sort of went part time and I did a few other nursing jobs to break it up from the hospital. But I said, you know, and I was talking to my husband and we were like, you know, one day we should go travel Australia. And I was like, yeah, I could because, you know, that was sort of why I studied to do nursing and midwifery because I knew like it's a job you can do anywhere. Yeah. And but you get so bogged down, you know, when you you've we owned a house, so you're paying your bills and the money you're making is just living paycheck to paycheck. You're working all these hours. And I think it all came to a head when COVID hit. Yeah. Uh, so and I think for a lot of people, that's mm-hmm. the same. So all of a sudden COVID hit and then not only were we working these really long hours, but we were now having to do it in full PPE. So, you know, you're doing eight hours and you're in um, 
a gown, gloves, yeah. mat, like for the whole time and you're sweating. And I worked a lot of the front line. So I was like out at the airport, you know, triaging people that were coming in. And before that, I was doing COVID swabbing and testing. And mm. um, it just, yeah, it was so much. And Melbourne lockdown as well was very strict. And I think that exacerbated, like we love going to the beach and we love the ocean. We live quite in a city and because we had that 5K radius, mm. all of a sudden, we couldn't actually go to the beach, you know, on our <laughs> designated one hour a day that we were allowed out. <laughs> so oh, I thought that was just so ridiculous. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't watch, I stopped watching the news many, many years ago because I was mm. just, you know, this is, unless you've actually got something good and positive to say, I don't want to hear it. And, and I think it became because of nursing and, and the type of nursing I was doing as well. Um, cause I was primarily in medical, but you know, medical, medical gets everything we, and we, yeah. and, and, and the ward I worked on, we literally got everything, like anything that you could imagine, we got it. And, um, you know, the average lifespan of a medical nurse on medical ward is only a few years, but I managed to surpass that. I don't know. I uh, don't know why, but that's probably why I burnt out. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, I'm just staying here for the people. I did. I do remember I went off and did day surgery for a little bit to break it up, but then I ended up going back. To, apparently, I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. But yeah, I mean, I definitely remember when I left my job. I think I'd been at that Melbourne hospital for about five years, and after I left, I just oh, it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> And I honestly was just like, why, why did I not do that sooner? Why, yeah. yeah, why did I keep staying? And you just get, you just get this feeling that even though technically no one's making you stay, mm. you still have this responsibility that you feel to people you work with you because they become your friends and your family. You, they they, you spend so long with these people, they yes. become like family. And so you get to the point where you're like, yeah, I could go home or I could do a double shift. So you guys are not going to be in the ship basically. Yeah. And so you just end up, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they play on it, don't they, too? Like real subtle undertones of, you know, yeah, it's, I guess, you know, looking back on it, it's like, oh. But I thankfully, I've got some, um, I do remember when I was studying at my teachers and stuff, they mm -hmm. said, you know, these people will become like your family. They will become, and I didn't fully get that until I, I worked on the ward that I worked on. And I do have, even though I'm not clinically working by the bedside anymore, I do have at least three to four core um, girls that I still, that I consider like my sisters, you know, they're like, I'm, yeah, yeah, and, 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 they're people that I would literally, I think I can see myself being friends with for the rest of my life because I always yes, say we, definitely. we were in the trenches together. <laughs> Do you no, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you work 40 to 60 hours a week with these people. And as a healthcare, you know, a nurse or midwife, you see yeah. some traumatic shit that you just have to, you sort of bond over it and people you know, it's really hard to talk to other people when you come out and you're like, oh, my God, you know, these awful, awful things. I think especially in midwifery, like it goes from these amazing things that you see, but when things are awful, they are terrible. You yeah. know, when you've got like babies dying and mums, like it's just terrible. That is not what you, you know, that's, it's, it's part of it, I guess, but that's I not know. what you signed up for a midwife for. So, and it always just seems so awful when those things happen because essentially you're thinking, well, these people are healthy. They're well, we're welcoming a new yeah. life. And then you get these awful things that happen and it just bonds you with the people that you're, you know, going about with. Yeah, I agree. And, and you need to have, I know for myself, because <laughs> I still find it a bit difficult to go out into the quote unquote real world and not look at people's veins and want to put a cannula in someone's veins <laughs> or, or like, uh, um, I still can't help but medically assess people, you know, or, um, and then the stories and even like, I've got a 10 year old daughter. She loves hearing some of my funny um, nursing stories. She's like, tell me. If yeah. I'm, story. I'm like, I'm going to have to censor some of this, <laughs> you know, but you do need, to, those, 
you do have to I have to I even I have to with quote unquote normy conversations I have to be careful with what I tell people because I keep forgetting that sometimes people aren't going to understand <laughs> that they don't want to hear the kinds of tra- or think about the kinds of traumatic things that we see <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely they don't. So that that's why you have to have other like nursery midwife friends to share those yeah. stories with and then yeah, and then you know, five minutes later you just have to, you know, if you're at work and saying awful happens, you just have to pick yourself up and keep going. You might go yeah. cry in the cupboard for ten minutes, but then you're like, Well oh, fuck, there's ten buzzes going off. I can't stay in here all day. I know. I know. I often, so my, I wrote my first book um, through to help me to heal from burnout, right? And I called it Confessions mm-hmm. of a Professional Overthinker. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, and which is really, and I now know it was like a trauma response to all the stuff that was going on. But um, you're right. You can't, like, you literally have no choice but to keep going. It's like, you can't stand in the cupboard and cry for 15 minutes because you got to keep going right <laughs> yeah exactly so I think that um well so essentially COVID made this all come to a head and yeah. when I was saying about that 5k radius I remember it's, we got a sorry. map out and we literally drew like a big circle and said okay this is our 5k because we were just desperate for like nature and greenery and we yeah. looked and we were like right and we looked at every green Part. And I remember we visited every green spot and some of them were literally just corners of grass <laughs> in oh, the yeah. end of a street. And, <laughs> and we were like, okay, we've been to every park and we just kept talking about, you know, how we wanted to live near the beach. And, you know, we were thinking, oh, even if we were locked down and we were living near the beach, at least we could go out and walk on the beach and swim in yeah. the ocean and yeah that wouldn't be so bad and we were just like you know what should we fuck it if I'm allowed to say that we were just like let's just let's just put our house on the market you know I'd already sort of done a little bit of research into travel um midwifing and I was like you know I've contacted agencies they assured me there's lots of work out there so we just did we just went right we packed our house up we put a few things in storage and the rest of the stuff we just gave away and we were literally like giving things away selling things and Melbourne had they'd ended what we thought that ended their lockdown that yeah they've said yeah lockdowns ended so we were like great we put a house on the market and we were like let's go to Tassie just you know we can have a little holiday in Tassie for three weeks and um and then you know what we do we're like head up the coast and I'll start looking for work so we went over to Tassie and I think we'd been in Tassie for about 10 days and Melbourne went back into lockdown. And <laughs> and then we had we taken our car because we were going to drive around Australia. So we were like, right, okay, we cannot literally, even if we change our tickets and we go back into Victoria, once we get there, we can't leave. Mm-hmm. Because no nowhere else will take, you know, no other states were all closed off to Victoria. And we were like, okay, and we've we've put our house on the market. So, all right. <laughs> so then my travel midwife life began a little bit early and I called up a couple of agents and I just said, look, I'm in Hobart. Can you get me any work? And they and they actually did. So amazing. So we ended up staying, living and working in Hobart for about a year. Yeah. And it was great because it hadn't really been touched by COVID at the time. So I remember going to work and not wearing a mask, yeah, not wearing any PPE after coming from Melbourne where I was in like full PPE. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I don't have to wear this is amazing. And we traveled all over Tassie. It's a, you know, it's a relatively small state. So anytime we had a couple of, or I had a couple of days off, it was great. We just hopped in the car and we traveled and it was so great. And we essentially just decided, let's just stay in Tassie until everything opens up because it's just so crazy. And we ended up staying there for a year until everything opened up. And then we Um, went overseas for six weeks because everything opened up and now I just yeah I'm still full-time on the road and because now I work agency it means my pay is like a gazillion times better so I'm not having to work a full year and although yes I'm still going to hospitals that are still understaffed and they're still busy but I do it in short stints so I do six to eight weeks and 
I'm just, you know, I can handle it because I know I'm only there for a short time. So I go, you know what? Yeah, this is busy and it sucks. But you know what? In a few weeks, I'm going to be out of here. And I've earned, you know, a great wage. And I am only working now seven to eight months of the year. I go overseas four months of the year traveling. And which I couldn't have done that before on a normal um, midwife's wage. And plus, we are seeing all these places in Australia that we just never would have thought to go. And, you know, like I had a couple of days off the other day and we went to this little town. I don't know how little it is. It's called Orange in New South Wales. And it was such a great place. And I remember saying to my husband, I was like, I never, you know, we never in a million years would have gone, let's go on holiday to Orange. Like that just was not somewhere that would have ever crossed our mind. But it was, we had such a nice time and it's such a cute little town. And I, and it just made me think, this is why I love this. We are exploring all these places in Australia that we never would have even thought to go before. Do you, do you know what you've actually just made me think? Um, it might be the, you know, because you, you probably would have avoided or have essentially what you did was you avoided what, would have led you to really severely burn out, right? If you had have been stuck to one specific spot and, you know, like Groundhog Day, because I felt yeah. like was down. But um, I'm literally just thinking like it's like you only work seven to eight months out of the year. That's amazing. And and you get to pick and choose and you don't get yeah. stuck in one place. You know, I yeah. I had a um, conversation with a guy, my, <laughs> my car battery, it, went on the fritz yesterday I think it was and I was like oh my god anyway, I ended up at this battery place and the guy who was there he was so amazing his wife was a nurse and, I, and she'd only just um graduated through COVID and 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 I was like oh just tell her to try everything because she was starting she works in respiratory mm-hmm. and she and he said oh she she really wants to try something different and I'm like agency is the way to go you know you get out there and give it a go and um you don't get stuck because that's the beauty of nursing is you can try and, and hone. Yes, all yeah. Right. Yeah, I definitely think that, yeah. Yeah, I think what you've probably uncovered, like, well, that's what, this is what I'm thinking, more and <laughs> more and more nurses should do more travel nursing, especially in Australia, because then you can, you're not bound to anything. You're probably less likely to burn out too. <laughs> Well, that's that's what I feel now because even if I start getting a bit over and I'm getting to and I'm just like, oh, gosh, this is too much. And I think, you know what, we've only got three weeks left. And yeah. if if I decide I need a break, I can take one or two weeks break, three weeks, or I can take however long I like, really, yeah. <laughs> and before yeah. I sign up and take another contract. So it's yeah. nice now that you can kind of set your limits and go, okay, I'm only going to work six weeks or four weeks or five yeah. and if you really like somewhere, then you can say, look, actually, I, I love it. Here. This is great. Which, you know, can I extend? Or I've had hospitals where I really love working there. And I've said, this is great. You know what? I'm going to come back here. And then yeah. in a few months, I go back there because I had such a great time working there. And then I'll work another six weeks. And yeah, so you can sort of, if you find those hospitals you love and they, um, I mean, I don't know when they're ever going to fix this staffing crisis I guess they haven't yeah. over the last the last 20 years so I don't know they're going to fix it anytime soon but I found with hospitals that I really enjoy working with I can just say you know to my agent oh look can I go back there for another six to eight weeks because I know the hospital yeah. I really enjoy working there I love the people and in that way you can even semi-regularly work at a place if you like it and then go off and have other contracts and explore other places and see what they're like in between and who knows you know you might find several places you like and you can just bounce between them or you know yeah. add in a new place to mix it up every now and then I was just going to say that because we we do like variety well I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't speak for everybody but I know for myself I like variety and um you know, spontaneity and difference. And I like meeting new people, you know, we're really, I shouldn't, again, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I know for, <laughs> my, I know for myself, like I, you know, value creating new f- relationships and friendships and stuff. But um, yeah, but then I do realise there are people out there that have kids and, um, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely yeah. people who like, you know, I've spoke to several people who said, oh, I couldn't do that. I like going home to my same place. I like working at the yeah. same place. And that's great because people need, you know, places need permanent staff yeah. and yes. everyone's not going to like the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm lucky as well as a midwife that we work across so many different areas. 
Mm. So I love that I'm not going to the same ward doing the same thing every day. Like I can be working in birthing or I can be working on postnates or I can be working with antenates or I can be going out visiting people at home or working on the neonatal unit. So it's like I get to do five different jobs under one title. I think that's so great. And, you know, I think, yeah, it's um something that is... I remembered when I was working, I, I mean, I had, I've got a 10 year old and I had a mortgage at the time and all this other stuff. And, you know, looking back, you know, when, when we all went through COVID and our kids were, um, couldn't go to school, um, you know, and we all had to homeschool our kids and stuff like that. I'm like, well, you know, you don't even really, even if you have kids, you don't even really need to have them enrolled in a standard school for a year or two if you don't want to you could homeschool your kids and do your travel nursing and travel Australia and do what you want to do like so there's always options available to yeah you. There, there's definitely options so I've met people who who travel with their whole family and they travel yeah. in a caravan because yeah. you know accommodation can be an issue but I've also yeah. met other people on the flip side who leave their kids at home with their partner and then come away and travel and they're like well this, you know it's just great if you've got a partner and you know yeah. you've got enough get flexible options to do that and I remember on my last one she said oh yeah I came for four weeks she said and then I just extended for another four <laughs> she was like it's all right <laughs> I was like oh that's great yeah and she was like you know the kids can come visit on the you know when I got days off because yeah. I think it was about maybe about a three or four hour drive from where she lived so she said you yeah. know when I've got a couple of days off my husband comes up and brings the kids for a couple of days and then go back and I just stay and work might be the new age way of not going through a divorce like I should I probably should have done that <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I travel with my husband and a few people have said, oh, I, you know, they don't think they could do that. But, um, but you know, we, we like taking that together. Well, so that's can... all right. <laughs> it's, it's cool. I say whatever works, works. Like, I love it. Yeah. Um, so had you, I mean, I know we, we kind of touched on, had you ever experienced burnout? You know, like that feeling of just constant dread and anxiety. And just like, oh, oh, definitely. Definitely. When I was working at the hospital at Melbourne that sort of time when and I've never even felt that you know a lot of people say oh I'm an anxious person I've never felt that I was a person who has anxiety or anxious in any sort of way but definitely just getting that oh that sort of like knot in your heart you know when you're going to work and just thinking I really don't want to just go here or be here I'm being so anxious about going to a job and you know, I thought this shouldn't be like this. I, because I went back as a mature age student to study nursing and mid. So this was sort of my new lease of life. And, you know, I was working this job I love, but also working at an extremely busy hospital that, you know, we were doing roughly about 4,000 deliveries a year. And so it just, I began not even to feel like a midwife. I just sort of it uh it felt like a conveyor belt I don't really know how to say it but you could you didn't even bond or make any relationships with these women you were looking after because they would come and then it was all about trying to you know have beds ready oh do they want to go early do they want to go early ask them to leave early and you know just to get people out as soon as possible and it just felt like I was losing my love and joy and for the job so definitely once I've and I even notice that now when I work at busier hospitals um, that are a little bit bigger, it's just I get that, oh, this is like being back in Melbourne. And then when I go to like a smaller hospital that maybe only does 200 births a year, which people have said to me, oh, don't you get bored? And I was like, no, I get to feel like a midwife. I mm-hmm. feel I can spend time with these women. I get to know them and have a relationship. And when they come in to have their baby, I'm not like, wait, who are you? What's your name? What's your story? What, you know, because I'm like, oh, great. We've already spent heaps of time together. I know who you are. I know I think about you. I know what your birth plan is. I know what you want. And yeah. yeah. Do you know what I said something? I think I said something to somebody on, on another person's podcast once. I'm like, you know, nurses are pro- pro- professional boundary crossers. <laughs> Even, but we're also like, in terms of, you know, we get to know people from the the very core being of of who they yeah. are. 
we love their stories, right? We love and we and we literally yeah. love every single detail about their lives. And when you don't, and it's not to be intrusive. It's just because that's how you get to build a relationship. Yeah, with definitely. And and you have you to build yeah. this sort of instant relationship, especially for mid, where you're getting very personal and yeah. with people you have to build this instant relationship and sometimes within a few minutes it's like you're yeah. taking over a shift oh hang on this person's about to have a baby and you're like hi sorry let me just yeah yeah you, just, you know you know um <laughs> what sort of self-care well you've already kind of tapped into self-care you like you you figured out travel nursing is a part of your self-care so yeah than, so no, definitely right? what, yeah so sort of choosing when i'm going to work um i mean definitely there is the freedom within travel mid or nursing for you because there's a lot of agents so there's essentially pretty much work all over australia Mm -hmm. so there is the freedom to say okay i want to work in this area and just call up agencies you have any jobs in this area great send me there um i tend just to i haven't done that so much i think more because i'm traveling with my husband and that limits a bit more accommodation wise because the hospital and agency they organize our accommodation um but i'm pretty happy to explore and go anywhere so i'm just like okay who will put me and my husband up (laughs) what have you got so they they put they do your they do your accommodation and stuff yeah yeah so great i did not know that there you go oh there you go yeah if you're interested in travel nursing in australia most places will put you up that's amazing so that takes yeah they do what does your hubby do then like to get work and stuff like that so he he works online which is good so as long as he's got um his laptop and the internet which i mean some places we've been and the internet hasn't been great but yeah. yeah oh wow like you got like the golden goose of um the work-life balance that I call the myth. I don't know if it's a myth anymore. You just <laughs> got to be open and open to, to new possibilities, right? Yeah, I think you just got to take it. I mean, it definitely was scary. Do, you know, we quit our jobs, we sold our house and I didn't even have oh. a contract or anything booked in. So you do have that moment where you're like, we've just made ourselves homeless and unemployed in one go. Is this going to work out? <laughs> And, and you know it did. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, but do you know what? It um sometimes when you throw caution to the wind, it seems um like reckless. But I've always been a big believer in sometimes when you do those things, the universe just catches you, and it's like this yeah. weird, this weird, cool thing that happens. I mean, I've had it happen to me multiple times where I've just had to throw caution to the wind. Um for various reasons and I've always been caught and I just think yeah it's just it's kind of like a sign that you're like right I'm ready for change I'm okay with it and I don't you know just give me what you got and then you landed where you guys did and look at that I know I think you just have to be open to it and even now we've you know after two years on the road we you sometimes do get a bit oh, I'd like my own space and we've even sort yeah. of discussed right when we and this is a great way for us because we didn't really know where we wanted to end up living we just knew we want to live on a beach and we want warm weather so yeah. we're using this now that we can explore towns and we can live there and see if we like it and I've even said great when we when we do that and buy a house there's no way I'm going back to working as a permanent staff member. I can still yeah. go away and do like four week contracts and then come back and great. I've earned great money. Now I can have a month off and a bit yeah. home. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. What a, um, what a, I, I've actually got a girlfriend who she's, she's a registered nurse. She's <laughs> so super experienced and she's like, I just want to take the kids out of school and, go traveling around Australia and, you know, she's got the caravan. I'm actually going to talk to her about this and say, you should try this. And I'll tell her about it. Oh, she did. And a lot of people who do have a caravan, uh, what the agencies will do is they will pay or sometimes subsidize caravan park fees. So yeah. that they can park up and, the you know, the family stays at the caravan park and then the yeah. nurse goes to work. What a beautiful way of um, being able to you know see the world I see Australia and just and and just pick and choose what you want walk in walk out you don't have to get too attached if you don't want to and yeah you, you <laughs> the beginning and, the end and it's such a cool way of um yeah I, I love that what a great 
story. It's like, definitely, definitely nice to avoid the politics. I know, like, oh, yes. after, a, like yeah, after I've been somewhere sort of about four weeks is when people start getting comfortable around you and then they start being like, oh, gosh, this person and that person and complaining. Oh, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, yep, yeah. yep. I know I'm going to be out of here in four weeks, so I'll let you guys have your <laughs> little involved. fights. Yeah. And I'm just like, yep, okay, sure, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> I always say that after a while, people's masks, you know, they give you their initial happy face and then give them a few weeks or a couple of months or whatever and their mask falls off and then you start to see the real person behind it and you're like, right, my assessment was so wrong about that person. <laughs> but I think, you know, we all struggle, right? But um, oh, I've really loved your story because it's, it's given me such a different perspective on 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 nursing or well, travel. I haven't actually had any travel nurses on. Funnily, oh, was, okay. <laughs> not in Australia. Not in Australia. Yeah. I've had a couple of um, uh, travel nurses from the states, but in Australia, I think it's uh, yeah. I think it's huge in in America, mm-hmm. but definitely in Australia, there's um, it's it's a really little world. So I will meet so many people and that we're talking. I say, oh, what hospital have you been at? And they tell me. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, someone so worked there. And we always end up knowing people. And they're always like, oh yeah, I work with them. I work with them. And it's just a really nice little world. And you get to as soon as I meet other travel, there's always a few questions when you meet another travel nurse on contract. It's sort of like, oh great, where have you been working? What agency are you with? Where would you recommend? What are the best hospitals you've been to? What are the hospitals not to go to? And it's yeah. so you get this little idea and be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to try there. You said it's good. Okay, okay, I won't go there if you've said you don't recommend it. So. <laughs> That's cool. You have your own little community. Um, yeah. So tell us something really quirky and cool or create like are you creative actually? Um well maybe a little bit. <laughs> I actually did so nurses before are creative. Yeah, yeah, I mean before I did nursing, I did an arts degree. And oh, I yeah. <laughs> I did an arts degree and I was like in the acting sort of theater oh. world, which I think most people who are actors will know it's very hard to make a living out of that you know you do like yeah. one great job and then maybe nothing else for six or seven months so yeah so and I started yeah studying nursing and because I was like well this is something I can pick up part-time and still do acting in between if anything comes up and yeah so it's great <laughs> a little bit oh, creative. That's, that, that, was the, that was the quirky and um cool uh question that I was going to ask you because <laughs> I found that a lot of nurses have got really creative sides to them like um well not a lot I shouldn't I, again I'm doing that thing again where I'm like <laughs> banding this but I have found that there seems to be a lot of us that have either, have either got this entrepreneurial spirit with inside of them like myself or and or like they're creative they love you know the arts and things like that yeah I've definitely met a lot who are very arty they'd be like crocheting and which I'm not good at that sort of stuff or you know they're like drawing or painting and things like that or dance and yeah Yeah. oh yeah Yeah. I love writing is my thing my I love writing even though I found out that I was that I'm dyslexic in the last like 12 months or so I'm like oh that makes sense as to why I'm really bad at grammar and punch and like <laughs> spell. but that's what Grammarly's for that's how I got through uni <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I think that's another way as well especially when you have such an intense job just to go off and have a hobby or something you can do on the side where you don't have to be so serious and so intense oh, and yeah. it's you know if something messes up you know you know you might mess up a painting or dance or whatever but no one's gonna die if you mess up there it's not the end of the world whereas if you mess up in your day job that could be the end of the world so it's nice yeah. just to do something where there's no pressure and you can just be like oh it's all right I call it the pressure release yeah me, writing is a pressure release for me and I think and same thing with um like I'll sing in the car or I'll have a bit of a dance. It's a nice little valve release. Oh, so. yeah. Everyone loves a car sing-along, which is great because oh, you feel like yeah. you can sing when you're in the car, even if you can't, she's probably me. But, yeah. yeah. Who cares? I always say, my daughter's. she's like, oh, mum, do you have to? I'm like, shut up, I'm singing. Let me go. Who cares? I'm happy. I was, do, you want, do you want me to be, do you want me to go back to being that miserable mum that you had that was like a like, grumpy old cow and she's like no Michael say shut up and let me sing (laughs) now she joins in so (laughs) yeah 
Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Carly. I've really, oh, it's okay. I've really loved um, your story. It's just given me such a beautiful new light on um, how amazing nursing can be, especially travel nursing in Australia. Like, yeah, okay. everybody should give it a go if they can. Oh, 100%. It's a massive country. And as we well know, there is a huge nursing slash midwife shortage, which yeah. doesn't seem to, it's going to come to an end anytime soon. So, no. yeah <laughs> especially after 20 years but yeah um yeah so thank you so much for coming on and sharing your stories it's been Thanks. awesome nice to meet you yeah you too <laughs>